eBayers, I'm back with another eBay supersize sales of $100 or more video. These sales were posted on the dedicated thread in my Facebook group in March of 2024. And if you want your sale to be considered for inclusion in a future $100 video, make sure you post it on the thread in the group. I do get an overwhelming amount of email and I just need the information to be organized and all in one place. So I do appreciate when you reach out and email me about your sale, but it really needs to be on this thread in the Facebook group. And some people are not on Facebook, but they join for this very reason. And you don't even have to use your real name if you don't want to. You'll see that a lot of people don't. So I just wanted to mention that in case you have emailed me and don't see your sale in this video. So we are going to start with Kim Smith. She paid $20 at Goodwill, listed this item in late December, took a best offer of $100. These are Ariat men's cowboy boots, size 10D, 20 bucks and sold for an even 100. Janine Allen Joyce, our yoga teacher slash puppy trainer, found this Spartina 449 purse at Goodwill for $5.99. Took best offer of $100 plus shipping about six months later. My January and February sales had been really, really slow, but somehow this opened the floodgates and sales are back up. So glad to hear that. And you can see it is a Spartina 449 handbag, leather with crocodile print, and it has the fob on it. She paid six bucks and sold it for a hundred. Now we've got Ashley Duval. She says, I guess we'll start big and work our way back. I paid up for this one, found it online, and I can't recall exactly, but paid maybe $15. Took a best offer of $100, and it had been listed since late December. Rare Vintage Needlepoint Christmas Stocking Kit. So here is the evidence that Christmas sells all year. $15, it sold for 100 Jennifer Hungate sold for exactly $100 plus shipping. No longer needed for presentations and was tired of moving around in my office. Can't remember how much I paid for it, but I've had it for over 10 years. So it always pays to go through your old stuff and see if it's worth anything now. This is an Epson projector that includes cables, carry case, and care card. Sold for $100. And Jennifer, I hope it's good news that you no longer need it for presentations. <laughs> um, I've been in that world where uh, presentations are a lot to you know prepare for, and then you have to do them over and over again. So maybe that's a good thing for you. Okay, now we've got Wendy Kruger, who specializes in jewelry. She was one of our participants on the jewelry episode of the podcast. Paid $5 at an estate sale, sold for $100 plus international shipping in four months. This is Joan Rivers Maltese Cross Brooch gold tone with rhinestones and just a side note I recently created a lesson about Joan Rivers jewelry in the premium library so if you are interested in learning more about that go check it out I'm still offering the one month free trial so if you want to go to the premium library and look at everything for a month that's perfectly fine. You can download everything in there, which is about 570 videos. But I uh, just want to let you know that is one of my newer 
courses is jewelry because um, there's just so much to learn and I want to learn more about it too. So um, great sale, Wendy. Okay, now we've got Eileen Cole with guess what? A book. <laughs> Textiles for Regency Clothing. And she says she paid 25 cents for this book at a used book sale, sold for $104.30, took 11 months to sell. I love this. Um, in fact, one thing that Eileen says about books is the more obscure, unusual, I don't want to use the word weird, but, um, you know, the fewer there are of something, the more it's going to be worth. So this is definitely an example of that. Okay, D. Sweeney paid $1 at a thrift store with the intention of giving this to one of my kids. Looked it up at home and found it was a Kickstarter version. Had to guess on pricing since there were no comps for the larger one. They're usually 3 inches instead of 8 inches. Listed for $125. Sent 15% off offer to Watcher. Sold in 2 days. So this was a dollar and it sold for a hundred and six dollars. Next up is Maggie May. She said, finally, I have an item to list here. Congratulations. Welcome to the $100 club. Paid $4.28 a few days ago for this fancy collagen cream at Goodwill. Accepted best offer of $110 after two days. I have two more slightly different products by the same company that I have put up. I'm curious as to whether they will do well. The products include gold dust, pearl dust, and in the item that recently sold, diamond dust. Who knew this was a thing? This sold for $110 and she paid $4.28. Okay, Kim Furman purchased 18 of these at an estate sale for 50 cents each. I sold three for $105 last month. I bumped the price up $10 and sold for full asking of $115 plus shipping. It took a little under one month to sell. This is a lot of three Gillette Fusion Pro Glide Clear Shave Gel. So probably a discontinued item, sold for $115. Her investment was $1.50. Andrew Silveroli spotted this in a group of random DVD items from a small lot in a local online auction. I couldn't believe it when I saw the comps for it. Ended up winning the lot for $3.00 sold in a little over three months for full asking. The item is sealed A&E Jeeves and Wooster, the complete box set of eight DVDs. Three dollars for a lot of a bunch of things and this one sold for a hundred and fifteen. Bethany Henderson paid nine dollars sold for full price of $116 in a week. I always look up shoes that say handmade in Italy. The item is Sarah Flint Natalie pointed toe shoes. $9 sold for $116. Megan Powell purchased at a thrift store for $6 for the three bowls. One week auction. Three rare early vintage McCoy pottery mini bowls. Six dollars sold for one twenty seven fifty. Karen Monks paid eight dollars at an antique market, sold for full price in about a week. Vintage new in box forever crystal EDT spray. And I believe this is referring to Crystal Carrington of the TV show from the 80s, Dynasty. I think that's right. I did not fact check, so if I'm wrong, tell me. Okay, next is Nicole Hart. I have been waiting for this day. Purchased for 89 cents, sold for $130. Yes, you read that right. 
This is a Leon Mexico Starbucks City collector mug. So congratulations, Nicole. Welcome to the $100 Club. 89 cents sold for 130. Okay, Janessa Winter. Finally, this silly purse had 98 watchers. Sold today after a couple of weeks of being listed. Don't ask me why so many watchers because I couldn't tell you. Paid $5, sat in my death pile for three years. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so here's your motivation to get those items listed. <laughs> they could sell right away. This is a vintage Coach Y2K hot pink Soho shoulder bag. And she's got Barbie core to correspond with the Barbie movie. I just wonder if there's a celebrity carrying this purse or if it appeared in a movie or there's some connection like that where people just want to have it because somebody else has it and it's in the public eye. That's my guess why you would have 98 watchers. So $5 sold for $134.99. Julie Gambino purchased this at a charity benefit sale for $25, sold in about a week for $135 on best offer. This is a Sleigh Bell 2018 Wallace Silver Plated, $135 for this little bell, and she only paid a quarter. Next we have Emily Fortner found for free at my daughter's school free table on Friday, cleaned and listed it yesterday and sold today for best offer of $120. Sold comps were $130 to $140, so I listed high, but was happy to take an offer for a quick flip. After researching this, I want one for myself someday, but the bigger cup option. The item is Technovorm Mocha Master Coffee Maker. Okay, never heard of that. So now we know. And this was free, and she sold it for $120. What a great flip. Okay, next is Ginger Lampbright. I got this at my local thrift store a couple of months ago for $19. Sold for best offer of $145 plus shipping. $19.97 Fisher Price Loving Family Grand Doll House. $20. Sold for $145. Karen Morris. I bought this in a flea market in Germany last year while on vacation. I think I paid 40 euros for it. Didn't list it for a bit because I liked it. It probably took about four months to sell. This is Arabia of Finland, Howard Smith, blue. Oh, it's a bird. It's just a figurine bird. At first glance, I thought it was some kind of vase, but no, it's a figurine. And this sold for $151.99. Carol Hollis. This is a fun story. I saw a Facebook ad for a pile at the side of the road. Husband pulled this out of the pile, so it was free to us. Sold for full price of $159 with free shipping in about two weeks. U.S. military gas mask with bag and filter. So free from a trash pile on the side of the road and sold for $159. And this is why we do eBay, right? Mary Van Rens paid $10 at an estate sale, sold in one week. Vintage Stanley Commander hairbrush and comb set. $159.95 for a hairbrush and comb. <laughs> Jackie Johnson purchased for $5 at a neighborhood bazaar following a house tour. Sold on a 10-day auction for $163 to a buyer in Newcastle, Delaware. 
Vintage Crown Trafari Fleur de Lis Brooch Pin. So a piece of jewelry, actually a set of jewelry, five dollars sold for one sixty three fifty. Okay, now we have Leslie Wilson bought this Lisa Frank Marky Unicorn Plush at my local Goodwill for two dollars and forty nine cents. Sold for best offer of hundred and eighty five dollars in a couple of months. I love a good plush sale. Yes, me too, Leslie. So this is a rare 1998 24 inch unicorn plush. She sold it for $185. And look, this was in the 2022 Bolo book, the exact same one. I have the average selling price at 150, so Leslie actually got more than that, so it just depends on what somebody's willing to pay on some of these older items. Um, the prices are going to go up and down, but I always like to see that even later in time after these books are printed, so here we are two years later, the prices hold true, and that's by design. I want the information to be good for a long time. That's why these books have that word evergreen on them, meaning that the information is going to be true in the future. So I love to see when people actually find items that are in these books because it means the information is accurate. These items are still out there. And um, Leslie didn't say whether she saw it in the book or not, which really doesn't matter. I'm just showing you that um, this one was in the book and somebody found it. So it's kind of like a scavenger hunt. You get the books, you look through them, you remember the information, and you're going to find these items out in the wild if you're prepared. Okay, commercial over. On to Hydrin Tobin. Bought this at a estate sale. It was handmade by the mother of the women who had the sale. I had read somewhere in the reseller world that backgammon collectors sometimes pay good money for unusual sets, so I took a punt and bought it for $10. Couldn't find anything like it anywhere, so I listed it high and waited. Plenty of watchers, but no offers. Then someone came along after about a year and bought it for full price. I packed it super carefully. Every counter went into its own individual little baggie, meaning every little piece, every game piece. Happy that this beautiful handmade set found a new home. So it's a vintage handmade backgammon set with ceramic blue and white tiles, counters, and checkers. And it sold for $199 and it cost her 10. And yes, that is quite beautiful and unusual. Okay, KC. $10 into $199.95 in a couple of months, purchased at a yard sale. Dog watch, safe link, dog, hidden fence, transmitter with power pack. 10 bucks turned into just under 200 and that's the way KC rolls. <laughs> no, KC often posts uh, dud sales or worse sales or unimpressive sales to balance it out. He does not always sell these high dollar things. He's just like all the other resellers out there. Uh, you got your bread and butter items and sometimes you have eBay fails. Okay, Holly Feger, sharing for those like me who know nothing about purses, found two of these MZ Wallace handbags at Goodwill. They are quilted nylon bags. I had never heard of the name, and honestly, since they weren't leather, I didn't have high hopes. I decided to look up comps and quickly grabbed them. Bought this one for $9.99, sold for full price of $199.99 in four days. That is fantastic, Holly. Super thankful as this year has been quite a bit slower in sales than same time last year. So I like her gallery photo there where she's got a um, like a composite of several views of the handbag. 
MZ Wallace crossbody atmosphere and sunflower with detachable pouch. So it's a handbag and it's sold for $199.99. Okay, Denny Evans. I found this 100% cashmere Ralph Lauren collection purple labeled dress at a high end estate sale in Phoenix on Friday, March 1st. The tag said $75, but it was half off day, so I paid $37.50, which is still so far out of my comfort zone. I am so on board with that, Denny. <laughs> But I remembered a video by Suzanne a few years ago that taught viewers about the different levels of Ralph Lauren tags. So I looked up solds of RL purple tag dresses and decided to take a chance. I started high at $299.95, took an offer of $200 a day after listing it. So this is again a Ralph Lauren collection purple label 100% cashmere sweater dress. And this is like my holy grail. Um, that purple label and it's cashmere. Um, what a great find. And here is the video that was referenced. I will put a link to it here above as well as below the video. And um, this video goes back several years, but the information is still true. So it's called eBay Seller's Guide to Ralph Lauren Labels. And I just go through all the different ones and the hierarchy because some are worth more than others. This video's had almost 70,000 views, so it is still one of my most viewed videos. So if you haven't seen it and you're interested in learning more, check that out. Okay, Kylie Davis paid $18.28 at the Goodwill bins, sold within four days for best offer of $218.37. So nothing like selling an item for $200 more than you paid for it. Okay, this is an Eileen Fisher, rippled organic cotton coverlet and shams. So yes, Eileen Fisher makes more than clothing. They make home goods as well. So this is a great flip from the Goodwill bins. Jomira Kukan posted this before when it got sold via international eBay shipping, but it was returned. Got it sold again for the asking price of $236. Store on 20% discount. This is a vintage Hallmark Mattel Rainbow Bright doll from 1983. Excellent sale. Laurie Toman is up with some cats. Part of a large free clean out from multiple failed flea market stalls. Listed at $325, sold for $280 in less than three weeks. Sexton, USA, mid century, metal wall art Siamese cats, 1960s. Yes, those are very 60s and sleek looking. $280. Carlos Chavez, our resident mailman. I got this original Nintendo NES action set console inbox with zapper gun from a family member of a person I made deals in the past. I bought an entire video game collection in excellent condition. This is the first one to sell for, oh, it's the first one to sell. And it sold for $299.99 plus shipping cost me around $50 and sold in two days. I love that Carlos is so in touch with his customers, people on his route, and creates these great relationships where he can get these items to sell. So that's something we should all aspire to. If you are interested in those private picks, Carlos is definitely one to watch. Okay, Jane Brown, free to me from my mom. <laughs> Sold within five days for $300. Super easy, quick flip. And these are some vintage fry um, Western cowgirl type boots. $350. I sure wish I had kept my fry boots from the ninth grade. Uh, could probably get some sweet cash for those now, but... We all are kicking ourselves for things we threw out. But anyway, 
can't keep everything your entire life. I think that's called hoarding. But uh, <laughs> this was a great sale, and it sold within five days. And Jane, I love your mom for giving those to you. <laughs> Okay, Bill Hunt, he talked about this on the most recent podcast, paid $5 for this oyster plate at an estate sale. I ran it on auction and it sold for $316 and it is quite beautiful and unusual. Vintage Majolica or is it Maholica? I'm not sure how to pronounce that, so somebody tell me. Fish head oyster plate with six wells. 10 inch diameter. That is just a gorgeous piece. Five bucks sold for 316. Carrie Kochar, I've had this for sale for at least six months. I kept relisting and dropping the price. Had it up for sale for $383.90. It was 10% off. Got a best offer of 340. My cost was $20. This is a Zeiss Icon Contacts camera with leather case. Sold for $340. Sharon Saver picked this up for $5 at a thrift store, Jaws of Life. So this is a uh, rescue hydraulic cutter, also known as Jaws of Life. $450 and she only paid $5 for it. Okay, Denise Roggy has a story for us. I've had the good fortune of selling items for my sister-in-law's brother on commission, something I will only do for immediate family and very, very close friends. I take 25% commission. I made an exception for him because he's in his 70s and took amazing care of his toys. Many are in original boxes. You may have seen my first sale for him a couple of weeks ago was a Western TV show vintage cap gun in leather holsters in original box that sold on auction for $565. A week ago, I sold a vintage Firestone pickup truck for $476, again, on auction. Sorry for being a week late posting. I was having a tough week with a lot of appointments. Sorry to hear that, Denise. Anyway, she goes on to say, I wanted to encourage others to go outside of your comfort zones. My expertise is not toys and games of the 40s and 50s. I don't do auctions, and I really don't like doing consignments, but going beyond my comfort zone is netting some nice profits. So this is a vintage Marks USA Firestone steel toy pickup truck sold for $476. Wow. Okay, Cass Goulding also has a story. What a fun and exciting sale. I went to the local YWCO yard sale on a Friday afternoon when the doors opened. It was a disappointing sale overall. They did not get a lot of donations and much of it was not very interesting. As I was making my last round of the room, I spotted a pair of decoys on the floor pushed part way up under a table at the front of the room. I picked one up. It was signed and marked $5. I grabbed them both, of course, and listed the Drake that afternoon. I found one recent sold comp by this carver on eBay. Worth Point had a few from years ago, but none were canvas backs. Google brought up an online auction site that had sold a very similar pair a few years ago for $1,460. I decided to separate them and priced at $599 plus shipping. Within 24 hours, I started getting offers, none more than $500. I decided to wait till bedtime last night, and if no one bought it outright, I planned to take the best offer. Around 7 p.m., I got the notification that it sold for full asking price. No activity on the hen yet. I listed her yesterday, but expect to do well with her too. So this is an E.J. Pete Peterson signed decoy canvas back Drake duck. Sold for $599 and only cost her $5. 
Mary Alice Gray. I sold this for a friend. It was listed for five months and we took an offer of $560. She said she paid $300 for it years ago and she was very happy with what it sold for. I don't ever do consignment. Her husband passed away during the pandemic and had just retired and was starting to enjoy life after retirement and COVID hit. This is a Fenton Nativity Holy Family first edition 11 piece set. Took an offer of $560 and did this for her friend. Okay, Picky Old Fuss Budget, AKA Paula. This actually sold at the very end of February, but they did not pick it up until a few days ago. I purchased this beautiful high boy at an auction for $190 because I knew that Hardin was an excellent all wood brand comparable to Ethan Allen in style, quality, and time period manufactured. It took a few months, but it sold for $625. Okay, and finally we have Zach McDoor. A lot of vintage die-cut store signs pulled from the trash pile at work. I've been holding on to them for a while because I like them. So I picked one to keep and listed the rest. Five-day auction. This sold for $632. Okay. That concludes another Super Size Sales. Keep posting your sales and more importantly, keep listing. Tackle that death pile. You never know what's in it that might sell right away. Thank you so much for watching. Comments are always appreciated and I'll see y'all next time. Have a profitable and productive week on eBay. Bye everybody.